Hi, Tom here with uh, YourTrueChange.com. Back to the top five spot. Uh, thanks for joining me uh, today, of course. Another top five uh, things you need to know. Uh, book review, uh, where we review uh, my personal uh, favorite and what I think to be the best say, uh, books on uh, both new business as well as a uh, personal development. I think uh, both uh, concepts go hand in hand. And actually today we're going to cover what probably is my favorite uh, book uh, in the past, let's say, 10 years. And that, of course, is The 4-Hour Workweek uh, by Tim Ferriss. Um, I read this book back in 2009, um, and this was really the book that got me uh, to start to realize when I was in investment banking, working you know, almost 70 hours a week, uh, going in long commutes, uh, living a life that I really didn't enjoy, but I thought I kind of had to for financial security and for prestige and other factors. This was really the book that started to open my eyes and what led me into really kind of um, starting to go on that path toward entrepreneurship, toward a life of freedom, uh, and toward a, a better overall life for myself and my family. So I'm going to go over the top five things that you need to know about this book. Of course, I do recommend you read it. Like I recommend you read all the books I go over. Uh, but if you don't read it or if you just kind of want to know more about it, I'm going to tell you kind of the five things that um, this book covers. Uh, one, of course, is the concept of the new rich. Uh, now, what Tim Ferriss basically says is that we think that you're rich uh, only if you have a certain amount of money, okay? Uh, what is it? Is it $100,000? Is it a $1 million? Is it $100 million? But what's basically taking place in the new world that we live in with you know, shorter travel, web connectivity, web 2.0, is uh, the new rich have become a class of people that treasure time just as much, if not more, than money. Okay, So most people don't really actually care about the sheer volume of how much money they have, right? If you really think about it, do you really care how much money you actually make? I mean, what are you going to do? Are you, are you going to sit there and like you know count your bills? No, you care about what money can buy you. Okay, and what the new rich have identified is that if you if you commit something called geo arbitrage, which basically means that you could live uh, like a king or much better uh, in lower cost areas, uh, whether it's another country or another part of the United States or another part of Canada or whatever country you live in. Um, you can simply live a lot, um, you know, greater. Uh, if you live in, in New York or Los Angeles, um, uh, you wouldn't even imagine if you're only making, let's say, you know, in five figures uh, to, um, you know, rent, like, I don't know, some really nice penthouse apartment uh, on the beach uh, or, like, you know, overlooking Park Avenue um, and, you know, going out to five-course meals every single night and going out to VIP clubs and doing all types of elite things. But if you were to take that same salary and you were to go to a place like Argentina or Vietnam or Thailand, you can do those things, okay? Even if you move to a lesser expensive part of your country, you can do those things. And, and the new rich realize that. It's about leveraging your income um, to save a lot of money by going places where it's just simply lower cost. Um, and not only that, but you also have time. You don't have to work as as hard or as much to get the same experiences. So this culture that we live in, uh, by overworking, uh, by just constantly being obsessed with paying the bills, with uh, getting certain material possessions, if you could lower your cost by living in a different location, you simply live a better life because you'll have more time to uh, go and enjoy. For example, uh, me and my family, later this month, are going to be moving to Austin, Texas. Uh, from Fairfield County, Connecticut. Uh, so we're, we're basically lowering our living expenses um, by about 40%. Pretty good, huh? Um, so second concept is the elimination by automation. And this is really, really interesting. Uh, Tim goes over how he went from getting paid $40,000 a year by working 80 hours a week to getting paid $40,000 a month by working four hours a day. And, you know, I think it's it's really critical to realize the point of this is not to say, oh, you know, work sucks, you know, let's all be lazy and just hang out and only work four hours a day. That's not the point. The point is that there's so much waste and so much unnecessary, redundant work that we do, um, and we can be just as, just as productive, if not more productive, if we condense the work 
into shorter periods of time. And that's basically what Tim says. So much of the work that we do, say if we have our own business, we can hire assistants, let's say virtual assistants, okay, whether they be offshore or onshore. Um, we can hire other people to do them. We don't even have, need to have employees. You can, you, you can hire all kinds of services and have a business where you're the only person and you can hire one person to do your website, one person to do your outbound sales and calling, one person to do your customer service and admin, okay? Uh, you hire an accountant to do, um, you know, your accounting and your taxes, okay? Maybe you get, you know, you like, you know, hire other firms for your CRM and you, like, you know, in your billing and you can be a one-person business and pay less taxes not have to worry about stuff uh, like, you know, workman's comp and W-2 and paying payroll taxes uh, and have, I don't know, 300 or 3,000 contractors and get almost the exact same thing done, right? Um, and basically what you do is you want to set up your business where it works by itself. So you're not monitoring anything. You're, it's not your job to be an expert, okay, on everything in your business and to do all this stuff. It's your job to hire the best people could, who can do that, make sure that they're compensated and treated fairly and, and that they feel appreciated and then you step back. And at that point, you're eliminating all types of management headache and redundancies and all this types of stuff. And you can do it simply by outsourcing as opposed to going to find people um, and having to pay, pay them a salary and get a W-2 and do all this stuff. So that's elimination by automation. Um, number three, mini retirement, short work bursts. Really, really, really interesting. Tim basically says that in the modern day and age, it's, it's no longer necessary to have to go into some career for, you know, 35, 40, 45 years and then say, ah, you know, you know, my life sucks right now. Uh, you know, I work, I work, I work. You know, when I hit 65 or 70, I'm going to go and live uh, on some island and, you know, go fishing all day. You know, now what you should be doing is go through work bursts by forming new businesses, by making money on your own, doing what you want to do, and really, really, really work hard, okay, to set it up, okay, over, you know, for example, a six-month period or a one-year period, and then take six months off or three months off or two months off or whatever, or even a year off, okay, um, and really do the things you want to do. You know, work really, really hard for, you know, a year, and then take three months off to go and travel Asia or go travel Europe or go backpacking or go motorcycling across South America. Do those things that you want to do. Life is about mini retirements to get refreshed, to get that energy, and then to get re-energized and go back and, and, and really go through short work bursts. Because otherwise, you get burned out. And I'm sure many of you probably can resonate with that. I mean, I get burned out when I have to do the same, same thing every single day. I lose passion. I get bitter. Uh, you know, things become redundant. It just doesn't feel that good. It feels like you're on autopilot. That's not how life's supposed to be. And each day your life goes by as one day less that you have. So you might as well make the most of it. So pursue, plan to pursue your dreams now in your life by working really, really, really hard, okay, for three months, six months, a year, two years, and then take a bunch of time off, okay? And you can do that if you set up your own business. And, of course, that's where he gets into finding your muse. Because of Web 2.0, because of, like, you know, being fully mobile, you don't need to physically be anywhere in most professions these days, okay? Some, of course, you do, but, you know, many or most you don't. So if you set up your business fully online, okay, you're connected via email, uh, your phone, um, you know, you know uh, like, you know, social media, okay, you have web access all over the globe, okay? So he advocates that what you do is you can essentially go and, and go and conduct all forms of, like, you know, testing your business, um, your business ideas to see, how feasible they would be in the real world. He gives an example of a woman uh, who's a yoga teacher uh, who writes a DVD called Yoga for Rock Climbers. And basically what she does is she goes and um, she forms a landing page where she's trying to sell a product that she has not uh, published yet. And what basically happens is every time somebody tries to order, it says, I'm sorry, we're out of stock or like, you know, uh, coming soon. And that way she suddenly knows what the demand is for it, okay? So if, you know, there are, let's say, 100 orders in the first hour, okay, or like, you know, several thousand in the first week, and she makes 20 bucks per DVD, she says, you know what? I think I'm going to make money and make a business off this, okay? And she didn't even spend any money. So that's just one example. He gives many more examples. 
he's a genius, but that's just one example of how to identify your muse and to know exactly what to do as far as forming your own business. And finally, and I will uh, stop after this, add life, subtract work. Many people say, oh, well, I don't know what I would do without my job. I don't know what I would do all day without my career. Whenever I hear that, and this really struck with me with this book, I just say, what hogwash, what baloney, come on. You have so many passions, so many things in your life, okay, whether you grew up playing sports or you love shopping or you love to eat out or you love, you know, culture and art and music. There's so many passions that you have in your life. There's no reason at all to sit there and think, you know what, I can't do these things because I have too much work or I'm too busy or I have a family. You can pursue your passions, okay, and Tim gives many examples about how he rode a motorcycle across China, he moved to Argentina for six months or a year, and he became a um, world a, um, um, a uh, world dancing champion. Uh, he goes over how you know he's gone and he's fully integrated himself to learning all kinds of languages and different cultures. Okay, you can go and live your life. And if you're not into the international scene, there are plenty of things. Are you into cars? How cool would it be to sit there and take three to six months off and really fully enjoy your passion? What about just golfing, really focusing on your golf game for three to six months, okay? You know, um, you know, uh, so there are all types of things that you can do, and that's really the whole point of the book. It's a new age, uh, and you can become one of the new rich. Um, it's more accessible than it's ever been. You just have to believe. So I recommend the book. Uh, it's definitely my favorite book in the past 10 years. Um, once again, Tom McKeown, Your True Change, signing off.